Hello and welcome to our talk. My name is Jonas Höchst and together with my colleague Hicham, we are presenting our paper Bird at Edge, Bird Species Recognition at the Edge. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Hicham Bel Fakhir and I'm going to show you the AI in the presentation. Our paper is joint work made by researchers of the Departments of Mathematics and Computer Science and the Department of Biology, both parts of the University of Marburg in Germany. Over the last decades, we experienced a continuous loss of biodiversity. Birds are important for many ecosystems since they interconnect habitats, resources and ecological processes and thus serve as important early warning bioindicators of an ecosystem's health. Changes in bird species in time and space should therefore be detected as early as possible. As we see on the figure on the right, from, extracted from Rosenberg et al. 2019, there is a huge net loss of breeding birds over the last 50 years in almost all species. Traditionally, bird species monitoring is achieved by human experts who are walking around a natural habitat, identifying birds visually or by ear. In recent years, this is also supported by microphones placed in the natural habitats and analyzing audio afterwards. Drawbacks here are the huge amounts of data needed to be collected and also the time delay until results are available. In our paper, we are presenting Bird at Edge, a distributed system consisting of multiple components to enable efficient, continuous evaluation of soundscape recorded in natural habitats. Bird at Edge consists of three main components. First, Bird at Edge microphones. Second, Bird at Edge stations. And third, a bird at edge server systems. Multiple bird at edge mics stream audio wirelessly to a bird at edge station on which bird species recognition is performed. The recognition results of different bird at edge stations are then transmitted to a backend for further analysis. One of such stations can support up to 10 microphones. A server system is more or less limited by the hardware performance, but it can easily handle up to hundreds of stations. The delay between a bird song being recorded by a microphone and its visualization is in the order of seconds compared to the order of days in traditional approaches. Of particular interest is the hardware of both the mics and the stations as they are harmonized for energy efficiency. A mic consists of an Espressive ESP32 microcontroller, which has a dual-core CPU at 80 MHz, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, as well as other input and output options, including an S2C bus. To this, a Knowles MEMS microphone is connected, capable of recording audio in the range between 50 Hz and 15 kHz. Both components can be powered using a cheap 18650 lithium-ion battery cell. Depending on the component selection, local pricing and battery capacity, such a max system is between 22 and 50 euros. And it weighs just under 500 grams. At the heart of a budget at station, on the other hand, is an NVIDIA Jets Nano board. This allows the efficient execution of machine learning models in low power environments. For connectivity, an RTL Wi-Fi stick and a Huawei LTE modem are additionally used. The system is powered through a 12-volt, 5-volt step-down converter and a respective 12-volt solar battery system. Such a bird at edge station costs about 110 euros, weights under 1.5 kilograms, of course, excluding the battery system. In these two pictures, you see the prototypes we built for field experimentation uh, with the components described earlier. The mic components easily fit into a box of 12 by 8 by 8 centimeters, even including a small solar charger. And for the microphone, we drilled a small hole on top of the case and the microphone we glued to the bottom of the top. The components of the station are fitted into a case 25 by 20 by 10 centimeters but it also could be fitted into an even smaller case. Coming to the software components. But at Edge consists of a variety of software components that enable its smooth configuration and operation. Figure 3 
shows these software components as well as the data flows and interaction of users with the system. The software for the microphones is built using the Espressive Development Framework, ISP IDF. This contains also an HTTP server, a multicast DNS implementation and I2C drivers. When it boots up, it connects to the Wi-Fi of the best reception with the SSID Bird Edge and announces its services via MNDS, MDNS. An HTTP server is started, which provides an audio stream of the microphone. Potential Wi-Fi errors or disconnects are discovered by doing continuous ICMP pings to the stations. A bird at edge station, on the other hand, is based on the JETS Nano operating system, which in turn is based on Ubuntu Linux. This should be rather familiar. It runs a bird at edge daemon, which is in charge of discovering the mics, running and instantiating the processing pipeline. The results from the pipeline are then captured and transmitted to an InfluxDB server system. The server system collects the data from multiple stations and runs Grafana, a dashboard visualization uh, web UI which is designed specifically for streaming data. And now let me hand over to Hicham, which will, who will give you some insights on the deep learning approach we took. One of the parts uh, of this work is uh, recognizing bird species in soundscapes, which is a, a well-known task in the deep learning and machine learning community. The general approach, not only for recognizing bird species, but uh, also in the majority of environmental sound uh, classification tasks, is using visual representations of the audio snippets. And uh, then use the same techniques used for image processing to classify these representations. So, first important part is uh, gathering enough data to uh, well uh, generalize the task and uh, perform good enough on unknown uh, data points during inference. Um, as the table projects, we use three different data sets gathered from first the Marburg Open Forest, where we have uh, strong labels, which means that uh, we um, that for an audio signal we have not only the information of uh, which species appear uh, in the signal but also the temporal information is given where they they appear in the signal in the case of uh, xenocanto and iNaturalist only the, the species information is given for each record uh, in this case uh, we speak about uh, weak annotations or uh, weak uh, labels um, Seno Cantu and iNaturalist are uh, websites dedicated to sharing animal sounds for all over the world and uh, we targeted the majority of bird species uh, appears in Germany and end up with 82 species having enough data points for training. Um, to ease the training process we resample all data to a common uh, sample rate uh, which is uh, 44.1 kHz so analyze up to 22.05 uh, kHz frequencies which covers the frequency range of the bird sound patterns. Um, during training, we select randomly 5 second snippets from each record and uh, generate the frequency spectrum of uh, the snippets using the short time Fourier transformation, uh, which then get fed into a deep neural network. An example of a representation is given in figure 4, where the x-axis is the temporal and the y-axis is the frequency dimension. So um, one of the important data augmentation that we uh, used during training also is adding realistic background noise to the snippets to encourage the model to focus more uh, on the most important patterns uh, or features to recognize birds. Um, regarding the model architecture, uh, we used uh, convolutional neural networks pre-trained on ImageNet, um, ImageNet datasets and uh, fine-tuned the model for bird species classification. Um, the reasoning behind using a pre-trained model is to benefit from prior knowledge gained while solving another problem and uh, use it uh, as a starting point to another problem, which is uh, usually uh, beneficial. This approach is referred to as transfer learning. Um, specifically, we choose an efficient NetB3 uh, model architecture pre-trained on ImageNet, as I said, 
um, as it is a good trade between uh, performance and uh, runtime. For training, we replace the classification head used uh, during the pre-training and replace it with a new one representing the 82 classes uh, of our task and uh, random initialize the weights of it. The training is performed in two stages. In the first stage, uh, only the classification head is trained while the other layers are kept unchanged and in the second stage we train all the layers for a few iterations. The reasoning behind it is that by training all the layers in the first stage, the random initialized classification head will produce high gradients which may harm the prior knowledge gained during pre-training. The target or the loss function we, train, uh, we try to minimize is a customized version of focal loss which is mostly known in the field of object detection and used to give high loss weights to difficult examples during training. So um, in the formula, we differ between three cases, uh, positive, negative and hard negative. Hard negative are cases, uh, are the ones uh, that get easily misclassified. Um, in each of these uh, cases, the log loss or the, the entropy loss is calculated and weighted with an alpha value and then the inverse probability uh, given by the model, which is uh, P. Uh, we use the same gamma used in the focal loss, uh, which is uh, set to be 2, and uh, search the best values for alpha, for alpha based on our validation set. The training is uh, implemented using the TensorFlow Deep Learning Framework. So, uh, to deploy the model on the Jetson Nano, we use uh, we first optimize the model using the, the NVIDIA Tensor IT framework and apply the floating point 16 quantizations on each layer of the model if possible to reduce the inference time. For deployment, we use DeepStream, uh, which is a streaming analytic toolkit to build AI powered applications. It takes the streaming data as an input and uses AI and computer vision models to um, generate and make uh, predictions. Um, from each input stream, we first uh, apply uh, a high-pass filter at frequency uh, 120 to get rid of the hardware noise generated by the ESP32 uh, microphones and then uh, use the info, uh, NV Info Audio GStreamer plugin which generates uh, the spectrum of 5 second snippets and forward it into the bird at age model to make predictions. Um, as the evaluation part, part uh, we use the, the mean average precision as a ranking metric to compare our bird at age model with state-of-the-art approaches such as uh, BirdNet and uh, BirdNet Lite and uh, we compare also bird at age with our server version of the model uh, before optimization. So the results are given in the first table where, where it is clear that we perform better than BirdNet and BirdNet Lite and also, um, the bird at age model shows um, similar results compared to the server version <coughs> of the model. In terms of uh, runtime, our model benefits strongly from the Jetson Nano GPU uh, compared to bird uh, net light, which runs only on CPU. Also, using um, floating point 16 quantization reduce, uh, reduces the runtime with the 10 milliseconds compared to the floating point 32 um, optimization and we end up using the floating point 16 for our bird at age model. Thank you, Hyam. Our overall goal is to facilitate ecological and conservation research. Hence, the usability of the system is really important. On the right there is a screenshot of a Grafana panel, which is, by the way, automatically generated, showing the bird species recognition of a certain better edge microphone. To replicate experiments, an audio file of Xenocanto was played back in front of the microphone. The x-axis shows the clock time, while on the y-axis the recognition confidence is presented. And from this figure we can draw some observations. There are several occurrences of the half inch denoted in yellow color, color in two clusters. The gray headed woodpecker in red color appears to be in a cluster in the middle. The Eurasian nuthatch in violet it appears to be in two clusters at the start and the end. 
While other species might be detected, a single observation usually seems not to be sufficient to draw real conclusions from. Of course, much more complex analysis of multiple mics and stations could be done by researchers with specific research questions in mind. This is more or less the basic uh, to get data to do more advanced analysis on. Another goal in terms of practical applicability is the power consumption. We measured both the mic and the station to estimate the required battery capacities and solar panel sizes. For the station, we created a custom low power profile and were able to limit power requirements to 3.16 watts. The figure on the right shows a detailed plot of the station's power consumption connected with 1, 5 and 10 microphones. It is noticeable that power consumption is more or less static and not dependent on the number of nodes connected to the system. This tends to be really specific in GPU applications. With a 12-volt battery of 100 amp hours, which is rather common, it can run roughly for 14 days. A solar panel of 50 to 100 watts, depending on the deployment location and time, should be sufficient for continuous operation. The mic, on the other hand, just requires 0.49 watts in operation. With a cheap 18650 lithium-ion battery, operation times of 24 hours are possible. Continuous operation can be achieved using a 10 watt solar panel. So let's sum up our paper and draw some conclusions. We showed edge, an Edge AI system for recognizing bird species in audio recordings with the goal of supporting real-time biodiversity monitoring. Our approach is based on the efficient NetB3 architecture optimized for execution on our target platform, the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. We were able to reach a mean average precision of 95.2%, which outperforms the state of the art. We showed that a low power demand is achievable and continuous operation of such a system can be reached with standard components. And finally, all components, which we showed to you today, are released under open source licenses. Coming to some future research, this will include uh, self-supervised learning, because we have a lot of data, unlabeled data, recorded in the fields, and we will try to use this data to even get better results. Also, we will do real-world long-term testing of Bird at Edge in Marburg Open Forest. Thank you very much for the attention. If you happen to have questions or you want to discuss some details, we very much invite you to, of course, read the paper or contact us via email. Also, please check out our software which you will find in the respective GitHub repository. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye bye.